Hi everyone, this is Elizabeth from Cruise Blog, and today I'm going to talk about seven things that I like better about cruising with Royal Caribbean than Carnival. Let's get into it. Having been a devout Royal Caribbean fan for the majority of my cruising career, I always steered clear of Carnival, until recently. Carnival has a reputation for being THE party cruise line. From activity-seeking couples, to families, and even solo cruisers, they aim to offer something for everyone on board their fun ships. Despite being in my mid-twenties, the vibrant atmosphere often found on board Carnival ships never appealed to me. Additionally, I find that Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor loyalty program is much more rewarding than Carnival's. While I was surprised by just how much I enjoyed my cruises on board Carnival Celebration and Carnival Vista, there are some aspects of the cruising experience that Royal Caribbean does better, like their embarkation process. Neither Royal Caribbean nor Carnival give guests their cruise cards during the physical check-in process. To board the ship, both lines require that you have a boarding pass ready to be scanned. Personalized cruise cards called CPASS cards on Royal Caribbean and sail and sign cards on Carnival can be found outside of your stateroom once you're on board. While Royal Caribbean allows you to save a copy of your boarding pass to your mobile device, Carnival requires you to print it ahead of time. During the embarkation process, the port agent who verifies all of your documentation stamps the pass. Even though this is relatively minor, I prefer the convenience of not having to worry about keeping up with a physical pass. Overall though, the boarding process was just as quick as Royal Caribbean's. I was through security and on the ship within 20 minutes of stepping foot in the terminal when boarding Carnival Celebration in Miami and Carnival Vista in Port Canaveral. This also included the time that it took for the canine narcotics dog to sniff everyone's carry-on bags. The next thing I preferred was Royal Caribbean's e-muster drill. When cruising with Royal Caribbean, I appreciate that I'm able to complete the majority of my muster drill prior to getting on the ship. Usually, I'll watch the required videos at breakfast or while en route to the terminal, so the only thing I have to do on the ship is visit my physical muster station. Carnival, however, doesn't let guests complete any of the safety drill ahead of time. In addition to visiting your muster station, you have to listen to a brief presentation about how to properly use life jackets. After the emergency signal is broadcasted prior to sail away, the rest of the safety information is broadcasted over the PA system. Again, while minor, there are opportunities for Carnival to simplify their muster drill by utilizing the Hub app. Speaking of the Hub app, Royal Caribbean's mobile app is more useful in the days and months leading up to the cruise. My next Royal Caribbean cruise isn't until May 2024 on board Quantum of the Seas. However, despite the cruise being roughly five months away, the app is already a useful tool. Through Royal Caribbean's app, I'm able to browse all of the dining options, get an idea of what onboard activities will be offered, and even check out the ship's deck plans. Carnival's Hub app is useless unless connected to the ship's Wi-Fi. When you open the app on your phone, you'll see a countdown to your sailing, but if you try and click on one of the links to book a package or short excursion, you're redirected to a web browser. Next, I thought that Royal Caribbean's staterooms are more thoughtfully designed. My 158 square foot interior room on Carnival Celebration was clean and modern. I love the blue accents and light wood as the brighter colors made the small cabin feel much more spacious. However, compared to my inside stateroom on Symphony of the Seas, I was disappointed with the layout. I felt like the space in my room on Symphony was much better utilized. First, there was a nicely sized sofa. I appreciated having a separate sitting area in case I didn't want to sit on my bed or at the vanity after returning from an excursion. Additionally, I had two closets and a small dresser with drawers, which helped me keep all of my belongings more organized, and the placements of the closets on both sides of the sofa maximized the amount of available floor space. When I sailed on Carnival Vista, I splurged on a junior suite. While I did appreciate the large stateroom and ensuite bathroom, it was located next to a public observation deck on Deck 9. There was a window that overlooked the deck, and my cousin and I were startled whenever we saw someone walk by. Plus, since the stateroom was situated over the bridge, the view from the balcony was slightly obstructed. For $1,800 per person, I disliked the lack of privacy and was disappointed by the few perks that accompanied booking a suite. These included complimentary bottled water, priority embarkation and disembarkation, and upgraded bathroom amenities. While I haven't stayed in a Royal Caribbean suite, I know they have a much more expansive suite program, particularly on Oasis, Quantum, and Icon class ships. Moving on, Royal Caribbean's Windjammer Marketplace is far superior compared to Carnival's Buffet. When my cousin and I headed to the Lido Marketplace for what we assumed would be a quick breakfast before heading off for our excursion in Amber Cove, we were shocked by how long the lines were. While lines are to be expected on cruise ships, I've never had to wait more than 5-10 to 10 minutes at the Windjammer Marketplace on Royal Caribbean ships. The root of the issue was that there were only two grab-and-go stations open, and both had the same offerings. 
I found myself missing the Windjammer Marketplace, where I can get anything from avocado toast to freshly carved meats, grits, and more. Speaking of food, Royal Caribbean's main dining room service is much quicker than Carnival's. Overall, I was impressed by the quality of the food served in the main dining room on Carnival Celebration and Carnival Vista. While there were some dishes that didn't quite hit the mark, that's to be expected on any cruise ship. After taking so many Royal Caribbean cruises, I actually appreciated having different dishes to choose from. Royal Caribbean launched their new menus almost a year ago to increase the speed of their dinner service, and I have come to appreciate the quicker dinners. The longer mealtimes on board Carnival Celebration and Carnival Vista were a bit of a drag. Even the wait times for C-Day brunch were a little outrageous. After placing our orders, my cousin and I waited about 30 minutes for our breakfast, and the wait staff didn't stop by to take our drink orders for the first 15 minutes we were seated. While it was nice to have the opportunity to chat with other passengers around us, I would have rather had prompt service. Finally, no show on either Carnival ship came close to the entertainment offerings available on Royal Caribbean vessels. As someone who grew up going to Broadway shows, I have always loved sailing on Royal Caribbean ships with Broadway-style musicals. While Carnival's entertainment wasn't bad, Royal Caribbean's theater productions are just unmatched. The entertainment on board Carnival Celebration was much better than Carnival Vista, which is a theme that's common for Royal Caribbean too. Cruise lines tend to reserve the best entertainment for their newer ships. However, even the shows on ships like Navigator of the Seas and Freedom of the Seas were of higher quality than those produced in Carnival Vista's Limelight Lounge. While there's no denying that the Playlist Productions cast was talented, there always felt like there was something missing. I found myself missing the ice skating and aqua theater shows found on Royal Caribbean's newest ships. Nothing compares to the entertainment offered on Oasis and Icon class ships. The one aspect of entertainment I think Carnival excels at though is their comedy shows. I loved how there were multiple comedians on both my five and seven night cruises who did adult only shows. Well, there you have it. Those are seven things that I prefer about sailing with Royal Caribbean versus Carnival. We'd love to hear what you think and if you prefer sailing with Carnival over Royal. Until next time, happy cruising everyone!